choose to go to the moon. Lift off on Apollo 11. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm David Curley, remembering Apollo 11 50 years later, and the man who manned the command module as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon below. Astronaut Mike Collins in his own words about his mission and what man should do next in space. They were wonderful crewmates, each in his own way. Uh, Buzz was from a technical background. Neil was uh, not only a, a highly experienced test pilot, he knew the whys and the wherefores of the design of those spacecraft. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. You were knocked back and forth with spastic little motions, and uh, that went on for, I don't know, maybe five, six seconds, and then you were clear, and we all kind of went, whoosh, well, that's over. See, we're going back outside now, over. We looked out of our window, and my God, that moon is immense, and it is uh, so three-dimensional. You have the sunlight uh, illuminating the ring of the surface of the moon. Will you pan back out to uh, the distance at which we see the Earth? Well, I looked back uh, from what were we, 230,000 miles away? I saw this tiny little object somehow beyond uh, its size and its gloss. It, it projects a feeling of fragility. It, it hit me. This, it's a fragile little tiny thing, beautiful, shiny though it may be. It's very fragile. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin got into Eagle transferring from, from the Columbia Apollo mothership, leaving uh, astronaut Michael Collins in Columbia, their safety man, if you will. Mike Collins alone now in the command module. I liked being in the command module by myself. I had my own little way of doing things. I had hot coffee. I, I took the center seat out, and, and it was almost like being in a little church. But as far as feeling left out or anything, not at all. I felt uh, very much an equal partner with them. Unofficial time off the surface at 1-11-37-32. They only had one little motor. That was it. That motor had to work perfectly. Uh, if it didn't, they were stuck on the moon. And that uh, I was not going to commit suicide. I was going to come home, and uh, uh, I would not have been a happy returnee. I'd be a marked man for the rest of my life. Uh, I worried about ever having to be in that situation. 10, 11, Houston, you're going over the hill there shortly. You're looking mighty fine to us. See you later. We're 10 minutes away from splash, the very end of this historic Apollo 11 flight. So the deal was, I, I, I had bet Neil a case of beer that we would not flip over. And stable two was to be expected, of course, and there was the high winds out there. We hit the, the ocean so splat that Buzz, when he who was all prepared, his hand was jerked off, and he missed the circuit breakers. And I turned the switches, and the switches didn't work because he hadn't pushed in the breakers. The uh, command module is in stable two. Stable two, over. Stable two is upside down. The flotation bags will right the spacecraft. So we flipped over into stable two, and I owed Neil a case of beer. Ugh. Particularly you kids, do you belong to the future of this country? And in a few years from now, you'll be the ones who have the greatest voice in saying what direction this country moves in. And when you're older, I hope uh, to see some of you on the planet Mars. I'd like... I think that Mars should be our next uh, venture. I think outward bound uh, is part of the human psyche. And if you believe in outward bound, then Mars shines very brightly. It's the closest thing that we have to a sister planet. When we do go, I think it should be a, a, a world uh, trip, not a, an American trip. And uh, I, 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 hope I, uh, I hope I see that in my lifetime, although I don't, I don't think I will.